I analyze the science of what working out for one year straight does to you. As a kid with many speech impediments, early on I decided to throw myself into fitness. Did cross country, ran a 200 mile relay race, where I was the guy who ran up and over the infamous dead man's pass at 3 in the morning, coming over the mountaintop to see nothing but a trail of blinking lights stretching on for miles from all the other runners. Eventually going to college to grow my love of science about how the human body improves that I've used to teach many of my clients. So let's understand what working out does to your body and exactly how much you need to do or should each week so you can enjoy being your best self. Spoiler alert, this is something you can actually do and may in fact really enjoy. The first time you begin working out, you will quickly find that any form of exercise itself prompts a significant increase in blood flow to whatever muscles you're using. While the percentage really varies. Just to give you an idea, studies published to places like the Journal of Physiology found that for lighter exercise like walking or stretching, blood flow can increase by approximately 20 to 50 percent to muscles. For moderate exercise like jogging or lighter weightlifting, this number can be increased by 50 to 100 percent. And for anyone doing intense exercise like sprinting, heavy resistance training, these can cause a dramatic increase in blood flow to active muscles, that's 200 to 2,000 percent more, or otherwise 20 times above resting levels. This increase in blood flow from any form of exercise immediately starts doing wonders for your body. First of all, the increased blood flow during exercise enhances the flexibility of your blood vessels, stopping your arteries from hardening, stabilizing them to prevent them from clogging or rupturing as you age. As new blood vessels form, in your overall network, making your body better at delivering oxygen throughout it even at rest. And your heart also learns from the experience. As its stroke volume or ability to pump out more blood per beat throughout this improved network also increases, making your heart need to beat quite a bit less than it did before. But something many of you may be more interested to hear is post-exercise your muscles actually get better at producing energy or ATP. As your body is forced to improve its network for pumping blood throughout it, your cells also begin making improvements in the form of mitochondria, the thing we've all been told are the powerhouses of the cell, cause your cells will begin manufacturing more of these mitochondria within them, allowing them to quickly produce more energy whenever they need it. So even if you're not exercising, your body will be able to stay energized and alert much easier than before. If you take this exercise from one day or a week to an entire year's worth, get ready for an awesome surprise. As each day you break down and build up the strength of your muscles, your muscles, heart, and mitochondria not only get bigger and better, as your body, muscles, and cells become more accustomed to the increasing blood flow, your body actually becomes far better at keeping itself more comfortable in various temperatures that would make others sprint for a blanket or a place to cool off. As your body is now able to quickly dissipate heat buildup or even retain heat better, more muscle mass also means that your body burns more calories at rest as your muscle requires more calories to maintain, so essentially your metabolism increases. Your bones also slowly become more dense, reducing your risk of developing things like arthritis. Your body gets better at regulating its blood sugar and your lifespan increases. But the thing that I really love see happen almost immediately in myself and excitingly in all the clients that I taught, is for any of them trying to do something like a box jump or progression to some sweet trick, is the first time you go to do something the thing that actually starts improving first, and is perhaps my most exciting point of the episode, is your nervous system is the thing that first undergoes significant adaptations far ahead of any muscle tissue buildup. You see, neural adaptations begin within days, heck a night of starting a new activity, with very noticeable improvements showing up within just one week of training. When first trying to push your muscle to do say a box jump, or as I'm currently going through on my bad side, a move called a mea lua or half moon that looks something like a gymnastics front aerial, your nervous system is actually pretty bad at telling your muscles to fire and how to coordinate to make the move happen at all. So when entering something like a bench press, regardless of your muscle size, your nervous 
system just isn't good at telling your muscles what to do and how fast to go. But amazingly, your nervous system catches on really quick. And one of the first things it will do is start to recruit more of your existing muscle fibers in doing the action. This is why for any one of us, all the way to Rocky and Goku, all of your initial improvements in strength and coordination that see you go from sucking to otherwise crushing something are not from an increase in muscle size. In essence, the nervous system learns how to optimize how to perform a movement more efficiently, with the motor neuron responsible for telling a muscle to activate, getting better at flooding the muscle with a larger burst of chemicals that tell it to fire off more explosively than ever before, all happening well before the muscles themselves grow in the coming weeks. And this brings us to the second major change that you will see your body go through. I'm of course referring to the many psychological changes that occur. While many of us may have experienced not wanting to get out of bed to tackle the day and in some cases may just feel the weight of life's problems weighing us down, exercise can really turn things around. Almost immediately after exercising in pretty much any form, the day of you will experience a lovely euphoria or a thing that made sprinting through the burn that came with the final push of a race worth it called a runner's high, where endorphins, the body these natural painkillers get released and you mentally feel quite pleased with yourself. And this state that comes after working out sharply reduces your level of stress hormones like cortisol dropping your anxiety and stress. And this is a reason why my training meetups with my old coach to practice tricks a few times a week are so important despite how I may otherwise feel when driving to the gym. As I find that I always leave with my mood feeling really elevated and past this you actually get a cognitive boost, as right after working out, many people experience improved focus and mental clarity, but the real exciting thing to keep an eye on is the so-called super changes that happen to you long term. Starting within a few weeks that increase steadily into the following months is your cognitive function noticeably increases. And that's right, lifting stuff up and putting it down actually makes you more intelligent. You see, regular exercise, particularly aerobic activity, has been shown to improve memory and learning by stimulating the growth of new neurons, a process called neurogenesis in the hippocampus, a brain region critical for memory. These changes often begin to manifest within a few weeks of consistent exercise. As the weeks go on, the brain starts to see significant improvements in its structure, as along with neurogenesis, a wonderful thing called synaptogenesis occurs, where neurons create more connections to each other, helping areas like your frontal lobe that perform former higher cognitive functions and problem solving skills increase in their volume, their density. Essentially what happens to your muscles starts happening to your brain, as the brain also becomes more plastic, able to learn and change faster than before. You also may find that your brain and body by the year's end, let alone a few months in, can handle any and all stress far more effectively, as repeated exposure to the stress of exercise has adapted your brain's ability to handle anything that may come at you, and has stabilized your mood and even your willingness to do hard things that makes it so you have a far easier time getting out of bed and crushing the day. Overall, research has found this will cause any feelings of depression you may have to drop, as exercise has full on altered your brain chemistry. This brings us to the third and most encouraging part, being how often, how long, and hard should you exercise each week to get these benefits? Well, the first thing I must say is that some form of consistency is key. Choose the most convenient time during the day to get your exercise in. I go and train tricks or go out and run at the same time of day no matter if I do or don't feel like getting up and doing it. With that piece legitimately set in stone, now we can get into how much per week you should exercise. While any in most cases is far better than none at all, luckily the bar isn't enormously high. Think in terms of total minutes per week. Research and findings done by many different studies like Harvard, the World Health Organization, the American College of Sports Medicine, and many others go on to state that a basic 150 minutes per week of moderate intense exercise, or a total of 
21 minutes a day is sufficient, and for anyone doing high intensity exercise, this number drops to 75 minutes. Many of these studies show that the form of exercise that gets you the majority, if not all, of the physical, heart, and mental benefits is aerobic exercise. But for anyone who really wants to knock every benefit you can get for your body out of the park like a superhero or muffin loving San, you should really do both resistance training mixed in with cardio on different days or times of the week. The recommendation for most individuals here is to lift two to three times a week and get your 150 minutes of cardio in around that. Of course, if you want to go on the fast track to raking in all the benefits, the more intense your exercise is the faster your nervous system, brain, even your blood vessels will respond and grow. But for most of us who may not always feel ready to get up and go at it, or may even be feeling overwhelmed, it's important to note that many of these studies, and even in my own training or many of my clients, just doing something a few times a week at a locked in non-negotiable time, no matter how much you might feel like not moving, by far trumps not doing anything at all. Even if you have to cut the workout short, the difference between something and nothing, especially when stretched from a week to 365 days, is tremendous. As much as I want to end the episode on that note, I'd be a lazy teacher if I left out the part for how you can actually maintain this for a year straight, cause this is something that I'd often throw to the wayside a little too much in my running days, instead choosing to just collapse after a state meet. Because during this time, and honestly many others, I looked at how hard I really wasn't recovering between workouts, doing stretches, massage guns, light running, even activities like nature walks that re-stimulate you. So as my really sore hip from too many hyper jackknife phalon kicks, yes that is the name of an actual move that I burned out my left hip abductor on, has to say, fit recovery into your schedule. Additional research on the matter shows that in between workout days, or just at some point two to three times a week, a session of a mere 20 minutes or 60 if you're feeling really good about it of low intensity activities can significantly accelerate muscle repair, reduce soreness, and mentally recover you so you can easily glide throughout the year instead of crashing and burning out. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. The interesting thing that actually separates, say, professional athletes who can keep working out week after week and those of us who may feel like stopping is that they actually have a major advantage that anyone can learn, which is that their brains have come to associate to see the work itself as being fun, to the point that they may even crave doing it. As we go over one of the most helpful videos of the science of how you can get your brain to actually love working in this video right here. And remember, it's just a trick to help you. See you in the next one.